All right, guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're playing a little bit of Grave Jungle, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to go about winning games, especially if you're a lower ranked ga Graves pod me player in um, match. I think it's 13.9 at the moment, guys. Basically, in the coming days, I'll be probably releasing a game for each ELO bracket, going all the way from bronze to diamond, or maybe even masters, depending on how um, watch the higher ELO videos are. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure to like, subscribe, yada yada yada, so that you can see more of these videos in the future. You notice this game we're playing into Ivern. I've started my red buff here, guys, and I'm pathing towards bot lane. Although I'm gonna be looking for a mid gank on the pass through because they're trading pretty heavily and Silas is a little bit low. As you guys can see, I'm looking for this. I'm peeing that I'm coming, and I do all my fizz to actually look for the trade here. He's not, unfortunately. Damn, I missed the wall gem there. Really want my fist to like fight more, but anyway. Wasn't interested in it. That's all good. So here, we're just gonna dip down into my bot side camps and look for blue buff, etc. You see Ivan mid. Ivan has done two camps, but presumably has a bunch more camps marked. Just making sure to wall jam wherever possible, guys. Get those auto attacks out faster so we can have a better clear speed and get a little bit of a lead. It's always good to see if you can look for some kind of um, gank after you've done three camps, especially when you're doing these like transition clears going from one quadrant to another quadrant. This allows you guys to put some pressure on the map, which is something that Graves kind of needs to do. You know, you kind of need to cause some kind of pressure and chaos on Graves. Even if you're going to opt for a more of a full clear kind of um, gameplay and going to be very clear heavy, you still want to put pressure somewhere so that you are not just having your team always be behind. You know, a lot of Graves players, they kind of comment that their teammates always behind or their teammate kind of always suck. I think this is one of the large reasons for that because they're not applying any pressure to the map ever. And obviously that just means that the enemy jungler is going to be at least applying the same amount of pressure as you, if not more. And if they're applying more pressure than you, you can't really expect your teammates to be performing better than um, the enemy teammates, right? We see Ivan's going for the gank here. I'm going to rotate up. Kind of interested in fighting this. Okay, we got the flash there on the Ivan. See what I can do here to this guy. Yeah, a little bit hard to get some auto attacks in there just due to the creeps, but did end up getting it. Mostly done. Let's get this wave pushed in as quickly as possible. I'm going to check the top side skull crap. I do believe it's actually down, but I want to check it just in case. All right, it is down. So what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to insta reset. Also, you'll notice that I took a health plot in this game, guys. This is because this video is aimed towards um, lower ranked players, bronze, etc. So I do think that's going to be a little bit better. You'll also notice, guys, in this game, I'm going to go Noon Quiver Boots here because I had 1600 gold base. A lot of times you'll see me in my videos go Dirk, and especially if you've been watching my stream, I did a recent uh, Graves Unranked to Diamond um, journey on stream, and I was going Dirk a lot more often. I think that uh, in lower ranks, Noon Quiver is probably a little bit better because you don't have to snowball as much with it. But at the same time, uh, if you're you know very experienced with Graves and you're like playing well, I still think Dirk is probably better most of the time. And I think you'll also have um, you know more likely 1100 gold or 1400 gold base compared to the 1600 that we had this game. I'm gonna skip my cap and look for this gank here because the Silas is very very pushed up here. See what we can do. Okay. Excellent stuff. Quickly help this guy push the wave out a little bit. And then I'm going to check his raptors. Alright, raptors are not up. So I'm just going to dip back down and go to my raptors here. I don't really know what fizzes are. Asking me to do here. I, I don't see the play he's looking for, so I'm just gonna disregard those pings.
Now, guys, whenever you're going these kind of builds, especially the shield bow build, just something to keep in mind, you always want to opt for the AD components over the crit components. You know, Graves is a champion that really scales with AD. Um, the crit is, like, nice, but it's also not that good in the early game compared to later on in the game where you already have some AD behind you. So, quickly doing the wolf camp here. And then we'll quickly grab Grump. Oh, I kept some auto attack there, guys. My bad. So we're going to quickly go Grump afterwards also. And then we might grab the Scuttle Crab into Reset. That should give me 1100 gold, which is a really nice base for obviously the Serrated Dirk. This seems to be the most uh, common build that's going on at the moment. Some kind of variation of uh, New Quiver Plus Dirk into... Collector if you're able to snowball and shield if you're not able to snowball, but realistically you do want to be able to be in a position where you can gar uh, grab that collector part of me. So this looks good. I want my teammates to walk up here. Looks really good. Should be an ash kill here. Is there any locks? No, no locks really. I want to help this guy push. I know Sivir doesn't need like a lot of help pushing, but he also has zero items. And I just want this to be like, you know, pushed as quickly as possible. I don't necessarily want to get all those creeps, but again, I want to push as quickly as possible. Looks like my Fizz is dead here. Um, one thing I could have done better there is just pinged. We did see the uh, Ivern player. And I recommend this to all of you guys, you know, especially if you're in low ranks and you're someone who also thinks your teammates always suck. Another thing you can do to try and prevent your teammates from sucking is just ping more. Um, if you, you know, are playing well and, you know, you think you're very switched on sort of in regards to the game, then you should be taking it upon yourself to control the game as much as possible with your pings. Now, obviously, your teammates won't always listen, but that's no good reason to not ping as much as possible. Quickly grabbing the Krugs here. Oh, it's fine. Missed the small one, but it's not worth going back for it, especially at this point in time. Now, I want to take my red here, I think, and then go and invade Ivan on his blue. A little bit of a risky play, I guess, but I'm okay with it. It's definitely within my risk appetite to go in here. It's not even marked. Oh, hello. Excellent. Oh my god, that slow is brutal. Damn. I think I was pretty close to being able to kill that guy, actually. Um, no, I think definitely we go the other way this game, guys. Oh. Okay, nice. So, seeing on a bunch of different random components at the moment, guys, but we have a huge amount of AD right now. We're nearly sitting on 200 AD at 10 minutes. So, you know, if we do run into anyone who's uh, looking for a bit of a skirmish or a fight, it's probably going to be a pretty one sided match at this point. Now, I'll show you guys kind of the amount of AD that the other players have at the moment. It's going to be much, much different. 140 on their top laner who's also level 9, and if we look at their ADC, I'm going to guess it's about like 120. Yeah, 117. Well, hopefully that guy didn't rage quit. I know I'm skipping my Gromp here, guys, but that's because I want to look for this bot lane fight a bit sooner. The reason I didn't just go straight there was just due to how they uh, walked back here. I didn't know if they were warding or what the deal was. Ah, not ideal. Eh, I didn't play that, uh, play that as well as I would have liked to. Let's see what's going on mid lane here. Might be a bit of a kill opportunity. Oh, it's looking really nice. Oh, we like that. We like that a lot. Well, I mean, I would have liked to have got the, uh, double buffs there, but it's okay for this to get it also. 
All right, now we're going to pick up our Raptor camp here and then we're going to move into the Herald. I know that my clear is a little bit kind of yucky at the moment. Oh, really? Oh my goodness, you are joking. I do not know how much health that guy lived on, but um, it could not have been a lot. I think Ivan's going to take the drag here too. This is a really painful situation for me. Alright, we're going to base. I'm going to run here, but I'm pretty sure it's gone. Um... Yeah, it really sucks to be this fed and not be getting any of these early objectives. But, you know, sometimes that's just the way it is. You'll also notice, guys, here I'm leaving base. I could have, like, been saving for the shield boat, but I don't feel the need to. I think I'm going to be pretty okay in terms of generating that 1700 gold to get that. So I'm happy to just sit on an extra longsword here. Now, if you're maybe someone who's a little bit lower ranked, the game's maybe not going as well, etc., then you might not want to just be grabbing that longsword there like I am. That doesn't directly build into the shield bow, because you might want to get that shield bow a little bit sooner so that you can potentially get that shield, you know, actively being used. Also, guys, obviously with all of this, um, in terms of builds and stuff, it will definitely change in the next patch. And you guys will probably not be utilizing this guide in the uh, next patch when the next patch comes out i'll most likely be making a bit of a video on my thoughts in terms of the atomization and everything else nice body block to the fizz excellent another kill there we also got ivan's red so we know that this red's not up but i'm gonna run straight bot and look for the next gank now I'm going to hit this blast plant and come from a little bit of a different angle so I don't get seen in tribush as quickly. And since they've left vision, I'm actually going to take this. Well, oh, they're actually moving towards me. Interesting play by them. Ah, he's flashing. Lux has no Q right now. Nice. I want to see what's available here. Excellent. Looks like that Sivir's taking the reset here, so I'm just going to farm this wave. This is not going to hurt Sivir in any way. Oh, this is looking a little bit unfortunate though, potentially. Yeah, okay, I'm actually dead here, so I'm just going to grab the cannon. I made the mistake of getting hit by this Ivan. Oh, that champion has a lot of CC these days. That felt really painful. Anyway. We're still in a really good spot here. This is not really that impactful for the game. I'm going to respawn, go straight to my top side camps. There's nothing that they're going to do that's you know that important right, at, right now, pardon me. So when I come back alive, I'm pretty much at my keep house back now, and I would say the game's over. So from this point, I just do not see any uh, chance for the enemy team to really carry versus me, especially with the items that I have now. You guys will notice in the next fight that I go to, I am significantly harder to kill and I'm going to deal like a lot more damage. Currently 15 minutes of sitting on about 240 um, AD and this could even be high if I had played a little bit better. Holy shit, man. What the hell is this? Well, that's a little bit of a painful situation for me. And what the fuck? Guy is insanely hard to kill. Also insanely fast. Up gap is uh quite big. That's okay. We do see this Ivern here.
Nice. So I'm grabbing that. Um, I call it so that I'm a little bit thank you here. Ah, oh, fuck off. I'm silenced for so long. Five and a half seconds of CC. Oh, not five and a half. Sorry, just five seconds of CC. Still, ridiculous amount. Um, they're not killing it. What the hell? Well, unfortunate. I mean, I said this before, but yeah, this top lane gap is quite huge. These situations that are happening are probably helping my top lane overall because of the amount of CS he's getting. They're catching up in CS and even getting ahead a little bit. When I come back alive, we should be able to deal with that quickly. Probably go to my bot side, get the bot side camps here. Also, could have lived there, I think. Yeah. No, there's not like a hell of a lot of outplay room versus something like Garen, unfortunately. Just is what it is. Yeah, you know, he just runs at you. Press Q. One of those champions, really, the way to outplay him is just to have better stats than him overall. So, like, play better so that you, um, you know, have a larger gold lead and then he's not able to just, you know, get on top of you, spin on you, and uh, one-shot you. Also, probably shouldn't have flashed there. I mean, I kind of knew, you know, that could happen where he's just, like, ulti me. It's gonna follow me uh, if I don't get the flash off, you know, very early. But I wanted to kind of flip it. Because if I did flip it, it would be kind of big for me. Now, I guess they're just getting this uh, Herald for free again. I don't really know. Top lane's just here. Running around. This also sucks because he knows I'm coming straight to him. I'm going to try. Deal with it anyway. Ah. Excellent. Got the kiting out there. Also got the Herald. Shield bow was quite nice. Basically, all that could be done there. That's kind of what I mean about being far enough ahead that the stats just um, kind of align for you. Where, you know, you just kill him regardless. I'm going to quickly pick up this red buff and then we'll take our base. I want to go Black Cleaver as my next item so that I'm a little bit tankier and I can also deal with the Garen a bit easier. It's going to give me that move speed too, which would definitely be helpful. I don't think I have enough yet. I do not know. What's there? What? Is this fucking watered or what? You're at. Fine. Must be watered. Oh, you missed the cannon. I should have taken it. Anyway, quickly jump this wall. Grab my three camps here. And then we'll take the base. I'm actually just gonna grab the two camps. I think this should be fine. Then I can base after this. Run back. Get the red on the way back. Have it for a little bit of a longer period of time. Yeah, excellent. Now guys, I would uh I mean I would specifically recommend going black cleaver in lower ranks. The reason for this is, you know, especially with this build, you're going to stack it in either one auto attack or two auto attacks, right, to get the full stacks. So if you can create it, it'll stack in one auto, and if you don't create, it'll be two. So you're always going to be realistically getting full stacks quite quickly. It's a little bit less pen um, and a little bit less damage overall than if you go LDR. But the added health and also move speed, I think, is just so, so valuable, especially for low rank players who might need that little bit more flexibility. Feels excellent. Didn't want ult there, but just did as a last resort. Make sure that I get that kill. We're going to drop the Herald here to siege this tower out. Yeah, as I was saying, I think that that little bit of extra health, move speed, etc. Really, really valuable, especially for low ranks. Can really change situations up. Yeah, that should be fine. Yep, nice. This should be dead here. This should also be dead. Wait, what? This guy just got his, uh... Stacks? How'd that work?
Anyway, we'll quickly grab the inhib guys and then it should be basically GG. Now for final items, you could have looked for IE. Um, if you were really ahead in this game, you could have also looked for IE third, but not a huge fan of it, of it personally. I think that it's way more consistent to go pen as your third item and then IE as your fourth item. If you need magic resist and you're going to this build, I recommend um, Spirit Visage, but you can also pick up... You can pick up more, I don't think it's great, um, but you can pick up... I'm forgetting the name. Oh, Force of Nature. That's the one I'm looking for. So Force of Nature is going to give you a huge amount of magic resist. I think it's one of the best items, but Spirit of Zage is also very good, especially since you already have so much healing. As you guys can see, huge amount of damage there. 300 AD. Just looks broken. I'm going to dodge the luck spells. I should kill this guy here. I'm gonna save my E here for going over the wall. Excellent. All right, nice. Now I wanna mention another thing, guys. If you're versing super, super tanky comp, you can also pick up Black Cleaver and then an arm pen item. Now, oftentimes I normally just pick up the uh, LDR, even though I'm gonna have a decent amount of health. I do like the LDR in that situation a lot of times still because I feel like you're still getting some of the giant... Well, I don't feel. I know you're still getting in a lot of the times that it's being picked up and you're having both, you're still getting Giant Slayer passive. But if for some reason you were going it and you weren't going to be able to use a Giant Slayer passive, then Mortal Reminder and uh, Serratus are both also fine options. I think, you know, in lower elos, you might probably be better off with the uh, Mortal Reminder and Sir Elders too, just because it's probably going to be no one else getting heal cut on your team. Um, so the Mortal Reminder is good there, and your spacing is probably not going to be that good, so Sir Elders is probably also going to have more value with the uh, slows on it. But, you know, really, all of them are, are fine. It kind of depends on game and also your playstyle. We're just going to take this one camp base. We've got plenty of gold to spend. Now, in this option, in this game, pardon me, I have a few options. I could go LDR here or any of the other um, Lost Whisper items. I can go IE. And Bloodthirst is also a fine option in this situation too. But because I'm ahead, I want to be going for the Infinity Edge here so that I can really start snowballing out this game. So you'll see here we picked up the IE and you're going to see this damage increase is really, really quite large when we're picking this up. Especially at this point in the game where you're like level 16 already. Um, you got a lot of AD. You're really getting a pretty decent bonus out of the IE. Even though it's not like perfect, it's not full. Um, like not the full increase for IE passive. It's in my opinion still quite fine. It doesn't really matter that I'm getting hit by that. I just want to kill them as quickly as possible. Again, doesn't really matter that I'm getting hit by that. Better for me to just run at them straight. As long as I can auto attack them, they just die. Okay, I fucked that up. That was just a mechanical issue. As you guys can see, look at that extra damage now. It's insane. So this is the kind of uh, builds that I'm running at the moment on Graves and the variations, the reasons why I'm doing certain things. If you guys want to be in a community that's, um, you know, looking to try and optimize their gameplay, especially if you're a jungler or, you know, play a similar champion pool to me, I'd highly recommend you guys check out Maga University. It's just a coaching program that I run through my Discord where you can submit clips, VODs, and it also have the community aspect, bounce ideas off other like-minded individuals to uh, try and improve your gameplay. If you guys want to check that out, there's probably going to be a link in the top comment. Again, I'd highly recommend that, especially if you're someone who's like watching the full YouTube videos, um, you're probably someone who's quite interested in improving. So again, I'd recommend that. I'm going to quickly show you guys the runes here and also rank, etc. It's pretty much as I said. Now, this is going to be the bronze video in the future. Probably the next day, hopefully, there'll be the silver video, the gold video, the platinum video, etc. This is the damage we did. Uh, as you guys can see, basically teammates didn't really do much except for Fizz, um, which goes to show that you know you can still just carry on this champion, especially in lower ranks if you've got it down pat. This was the runes, and this is what the runes did in this game. You could also opt for 
Um, sorcery here, go absolute focus, gathering storm or something along those lines. Excuse me. And um, he can also go cosmic insight, free boots, but I don't particularly like it. I want to have those boots early if possible so that I can get around the map more, create a little bit more chaos and help my teammates make sure they don't get behind that kind of thing. Anyway, guys, it's going to be it for today. If you have any questions about anything I did, you need clarification on anything I was talking about in the video, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer that for you guys. And until next time, good luck on your climb. Take care, guys. Peace.